hey guys and welcome back to another youtube video so today i have a really cool video for you guys where i have created a neural network from scratch in python which classifies not exactly classifies it actually predicts the future bitcoin price and when i say future i mean uh, a few days ahead so this is a really cool thing that i have created and now i have to thank a few youtubers uh, like not everything is done by them a lot of the code is done by me but some of the code which i will show you below was done by them so uh, i will thank them when i actually reach to that part so first of all uh, i am obviously just gonna i'm not gonna be coding it out because there are quite a few lines of code that i had to write to get this thing working so i obviously won't be coding this out but what i will do is i will leave a link in the description of the video with a github repository what i want you to do is clone it and so what you can do is you can work on this project and you can actually understand what each of these lines actually does so first of all i've just made your standard imports as you can see uh, tensorflow numpy pandas date time and matplotlib now you won't understand why we are using date time uh, now you will see later on because we will be doing one thing which where we will be needing the date time module Next, what I've done is I've just loaded in the data. So I have just gone data set is equal to pd dot rate csv, and as you can see, I have coin underscore bitcoin dot csv, which is just this data set that I downloaded. I will have a link to the download this data set also down below. Uh, now, in this case, the delimiter is a comma, which is something that some people don't like, but in this case, it's totally fine. Uh, index call is just the column that you want to see first it won't really matter to the data set it's just something that you want you can just easily change this to like market cap close or whatever and yeah so next i've just printed out the head of the data set as you can see this is what it looks like and then th this is just some uh getting to know is if a lot of the times this data type should be bool and so we are just checking if it is Next, what we are doing is getting some information on the data set. Now, here's the thing. Uh, processing text, like strings, isn't that easy. But processing uh, numbers, integers or floating points, is very, very easy. So, if you have like strings and you want to classify them, then it's actually kind of difficult. You need to write a lot of extra code. You need to tokenize them. Uh, you need to create all of that stuff, which is kind of difficult. But in this case, we aren't doing that, right? We are predicting the cost. Cost, we know it cannot be a string. It has to be a number. So that's why, as you can see over here, almost everything that we have is a float 64, except the symbol and the date. And in this case, we don't want to predict the symbol and the date, right? We want to predict the closing price. So in this case, we all we care about is this close. And as you can see, it's a float 64. So we don't need to do any extra processing. Next, all I've done is I've just plotted the high. Like, what is the actual high? So, as you can see, I've just plotted a histogram of that. Next, what I've done is I've blurred out the first seven values for the model. Next, all I've done is I've just created this training set. And what I've done is I've taken the data set and I'm just, obviously, in this case, the training set will just and just contain the closing values. Because though that is actually the... Uh, important thing that we care about so as you can see now we have name bitcoin and then we have all of these closing values and as you can see this is i think some of the places when bitcoin would have started and this is now forty six thousand dollars now all of this is in us dollars I actually wanted to do this for other currencies but the problem that i faced was that i i, I really couldn't find a lot of data for other currencies so in case if you are living in another country, which is also true in my case, uh, you will have to find, if you want to predict for your country, you will have to find a data set that will match for your country. Or you will just have to create one from scratch. Uh, a lot of people, what they do is they deploy a few web scraping modules on the internet. So what it does, it, it will scrape the web every day and what they do is they keep it running. Kind of what they deploy to AWS or some hosting service. And they keep it running for a few days so they get enough data and then they can just create a model of it. That's also a way you could do it but in this case I didn't care doing that. I just went with the US dollars. 
Next one I've done is I've just uh, done all of the min-max scaling and I've created the entire data set as you can see, create, see I've just reshaped all of the things and just appended all of the things to xtrain and ytrain and as you can see this is how it looks like and now what I've done is I've just created this entire neural network as you can see and I've compiled it now I, uh, I had actually first originally run it for a few more epochs but what happened was since there was a lot of data, it was taking a lot of time and I personally, I didn't, I actually, first of all, this wasn't investing advice. This isn't investing advice. Obviously, you, this cannot be used to actually predict Bitcoin prices in the real world because Bitcoin prices don't just, you can't actually predict Bitcoin prices. If you could, that'd be a miracle. Uh, the reason why we can't is obviously because a lot of the times the way these prices are mediated is because of the exchange and the buying and selling going on which you can't have a computer to guess you can't actually predict the stock price of google tomorrow perfectly because there are a lot of things rather than just buying and selling of stocks that mediate the price the same with bitcoin so that's basically what i've done i've just fed the data and then i just plotted the loss of the model in a histogram and what I've now done here is now this part I need to attribute it to one YouTuber, Neural9, uh, because this part from here I've actually used his code. Uh, because what I managed to do is I managed to create the model, but I had absolutely no uh, idea on how to how I would actually test it because I'm not that great at text classification. So what I've done is install this thing called Pandas Data Reader, and what you can do is you can get real life data on some stuff using this thing pandas data data so what i've done is i've imported up top and then what i've made i have made these two things cryptocurrencies btc and against currencies usd so in this case you could have any other currency but here's the problem you need to have your data set in the same currency because otherwise all of this stuff will kind of get mismatched okay or you you know you could do some fancy stuff but what you could do is you can use pandas load in the closing and then what you could do is you could multiply it from the do dollar to your currency price or you know you could add in the conversion rates and you would get a good data set that would be working you could either do that or you could just use usd which i did because i you know i'm kind of lazy so i just went with usd and plus i i kind of wanted to give you an idea on this then all i've done is i've taken the starting from where i want to start measuring it and i want to keep on doing that until this date so then all i've done is i've just gotten the test data and as you can see over here we have the test data next all i've done is i've just concatenated everything and created a total data set then i've obviously gotten the actual prices that we have and the number of prediction days then I have created some model input. So the, uh, so the, uh, we are, we are actually getting all of the, uh, stuff that we want to input to the model and all of the inputs. And then I've just gone over the places of again, scaling, uh, uh scaling the, uh, values using the min max scaler. And then I just reshaped them. Now, uh, this sometimes I don't think you need to do this. In some cases you need to, if you get an error related to some shape, you might have to add this one line of code. And then I've just uh, printed out the model inputs. And the reason I have not run this code, particular code block because there are a ton of these model inputs. And I really, it really clogged up my entire Jupyter notebook. Uh, Jupyter lab actually. So next all I have done is I have actually taken the X test and I have plotted it in a NumPy array and now i have predicted the prediction prices but here's the thing currently all of the prediction prices that i've actually predicted as you can see the uh the real prices in uh black and the prediction prices in yellow currently what is happening is uh i'm predicting the prices but i can't actually predict the future price i can only and only see if my model is close to predicting the actual price but i actually can't actually predict it in any arbitrary day i can't actually predict it in any day that i want i can't just uh if i want to know the bitcoin price of tomorrow i can't find it out through this current model 
so what i do now is as you can see we have written prediction of next day what i've done is created this thing called real data and then all i've done is i've put it together in a numpy array and as you can see how it looks like and then i've just pre predicted it on the real data and as you can see this is the prediction and i actually uh, got this uh, 32205 dollars and this is you, you you know we can just round it off and he, what you could do is you could like leave the model over here and just this much but what i did was i actually waited and i actually checked the price and the price was obviously not matching the price was a bit higher it was i think 34 or 35 so it was kind of in the range uh but here's the thing uh the model actually managed to successfully predict if the bitcoin was going to go up or down now in cases like this what i would suggest you do is you also get your training data from the current days because a lot of the times currently i think this model that i uh, this uh uh, this actual uh, data set that I'm using is actually a large one so it actually goes still pretty much a lot of these days to these days so it's a huge data set so we can work with it in this case but after a few years if you try I'm trying to create this model since this video is uploaded even if you are trying to do this after like a single year uh, I wouldn't suggest that you do it in this way the reason is that uh, this data set by that time will become old and what will happen is that your model will be able to predict on that old data while you actually will be needing the newer data which is actually kind of bad because you will be able, you will be predicting everything incorrectly so you know that could be a huge problem so you you should just uh do it on the current data and that's actually not that complicated so yeah that's pretty much it as you can see we get the prediction and as you can see that that's this is a really really cool project you know you can do the same thing with stock prices you can do the same thing with like multiple different things like uh, some people like to do it in race courses so if you don't know like uh, if you a lot of people like to do it in matches for example you want to bet on a match but you want yourself to have a bit of an edge so what people do is they create this huge data set and they manage to predict it uh, obviously even that's a little bit more complicated but you get, you get the idea so as you can see it's not that complicated at all um, surely a bit but not that much but as you can see the result is actually very very promising and certainly something fun to make so i hope that you enjoyed this video uh, certainly was fun creating and i you know comment down below if you want to see more videos like this i have a few deep learning videos that i want to create and that i'm actually currently creating uh, a lot of them actually uh, you know i'm doing stuff with deep dream cycle gan uh, picks to picks all of those different types of things even variation a lot of encoders i'll give that also a try so yeah so if in case if you didn't understand some stuff or you thought that i went wrong somewhere what i would suggest you do is obviously leave a comment down below correcting my mistake in that place uh, but what you also you should do is you should go up to the tensorflow documentation and give that a go read that entire documentation because i think it helped me a lot and i learned a lot about neural networking uh, through books and uh, by going over this tensorflow documentation so certainly uh, you can use the tensorflow docs like i myself used it to learn uh, the neural style transfer method of deep learning i also used it to learn deep dreams and instead of going over like uh, two to three hour courses that just go over a single topic you can just use that documentation or you can also check out the tensorflow youtube channel uh, i like the reason why i'm attributing them so much is because they really helped me a lot with all of these deep learning projects that i've created like uh, their tutorial series were really helpful for me and the good thing about them is that they actually don't tell you to code along instead what they do is they just have these animations of the code that come up and what they do is they give you a link to the google collaboratory so you can just run the code and first understand the concept so that's pretty cool so yeah so as you can see this wasn't a very very long video now i haven't uploaded for a week or so uh, so yeah now i will again get back to uploading you know 
more times in a week but whatever uh, you know i can't pull on my promise so i hope that you enjoyed this video comment down below what projects you made using technologies like this it's certainly something really cool and if you can leave a link to their github repositories or paste bin links or even if you want you can just comment copy paste the code in the uh, comment section so that's it for today guys i hope that you enjoyed the video if you did like and subscribe to the channel and i will see you in another youtube video